Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. Come on in. We've been waiting for you. And we're just so hungry with the word today. I know that you are, and we're going to hear answers. Yes. Expect to receive something yes. from God today. Amen. Amen. We invite you. We've been on a series and we invite you go back and watch all the episodes in this series if you've missed them, because we've said a lot and we don't want you to miss any of it. Amen. We've been ministering on walking in love because we, uh, we love experts, yes. <laughs> right? Even if we say that by faith, we're love experts, meaning we're skillful in our love walk. We're skillful in our love walk. And uh, if we're faith people, we have to say we're love people. Why is that? Because the word tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but faith works by love. So it's not enough to have faith. We have to have a faith that works. And uh, faith only works when we're standing on love's territory. As we're standing on love's property. How many of you know God's realm is a love realm? And so um, on his property, all the blessings of God can flow unhindered. But if we step off of love's property, step off of love's territory and take one step into sin, um, our faith ain't going to work right. We got to get back out of sin, back onto love's territory. Amen. 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 So that's why I say we're good at our love walk. Yes. Yes. We're skillful at it. Yes. We're growing, we're learning. And uh, we can't just be interested in our faith life. It, that, is, that should be a priority, right. but we can't leave the love flow right. unaddressed. Right. Right. And sometimes people think they have faith problems when they really have love problems. Yes. And so we, we have to go to the Word Amen. and right. see what the Word says and be right. taught because really, if we're not taught, we don't know. Right. So we thank, we thank God for the privilege to learn together about yes. these yes. things. Yes. Amen. We were saying this that uh, in previous episodes that if we called faith a vehicle, love is the engine of that vehicle. And we've all probably seen homes that there's a car that somebody has maybe in the backyard or something that doesn't work. It's missing an engine. Haven't you ever seen a, a yards with vehicles in them? They got the vehicle, but it's not going anywhere. Well, we don't want the vehicle of faith to be stuck. We want it to move and have movement and accomplish something because it's by faith that we, we move with God. But love is what powers our faith life. And so we're learning. I said, we're learning. We've also been looking at something that brother Hagen said that is so insightful because you say, well, pastor Nancy, uh, the name of your broadcast is called Jesus, the healer. It sure is. And that's why we're talking about love because our healer is a love healer. Amen. Um, but Brother Hagen, Kenneth E. Hagen would make this statement. He said, I count more on my love walk to keep me healthy than my confessions of faith. Mm-hmm. So what is he saying? If we're, st- if we're, not, if we're not walking in love, uh, we cannot substitute the absence of love with throwing a bunch of faith confessions at, right. at, the, at the need. Right. Right. If we have a need, we have a need to walk in faith, but we also have a need to walk in love. And then Brother Hagen also made this statement. If symptoms show up, 
the first place I check is my love walk yes, to yes. make sure I'm walking in love. Yes. Yes. What's he saying? To make sure I'm on love's territory. That's because right. if I step off of love's property, there's no healing flowing on sin's yes. property. Yes. So if I need healing to flow, I'm going to have to be where on the property where healing can reach me. That's and right. that's on love's territory. Yes. Amen. 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 And if it helps us to look at, at love that way. Love is a property. It's a territory that we walk on. Yes. And then everything, all the blessings of God can reach us when we're on God's property. Amen. But if we're off of God's property, which is sin, the devil's property, uh, God's blessings can't reach us the same way. God doesn't withhold his blessings, but we can move what property we're standing on. Yes. And you know, at my home, uh, my home sits on a, a parcel of land. That's my property. Yes. I have authority there. Yes. But if I step onto the neighbor's property, I don't have the same authority yes. there. Right. So people will try to use their authority over the devil, but whose property are you standing on? Right. You can't be standing on the devil's property oh, and try to exercise the authority that yes. came from God. Right. We have to be on love's property, yes. which is God's property. Yes. And so this is what we've been talking about. We've said many, many things over the last uh, several weeks. So we want you to get hold of it. Go and watch those again. Um, We we started on the previous episode going through 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. Um, we won't read that whole passage, but I want to touch again what we, what we touched on in the previous episode and then go further today. Um, one of the things that it says, love is patient, love is kind. The King James says, love suffereth long. But other translations on love is patient says this, love is slow to lose patience. Yeah. Um, another translation on this phrase says, love is never tired of waiting. Mm-hmm. Another one says love never gives up. Why? If we're impatient, we give up certain things. And know this, patience is not just putting up with something. Patience will, uh, it will mm, reflect or demonstrate or color how you put up with something. So we could say this, Patience is joyful while it waits. That's key. It's joyful while it waits. Because some people are waiting and they're mad the whole time they're waiting. Seriously, they're they're royally (laughs) displeased. No, patience is not just waiting, but it's how you wait with joy. In fact, if we're not joyful in waiting, we're not yet patient. So that means our attitude is pleasing to wait. Amen. Yes, because sometimes you got to wait on other people, right? But you know what? God's been waiting on us a long time. He was waiting on us to join his family. He was waiting. He's been waiting on us as we grow and develop and mature. He's waiting on us. And aren't, aren't, don't we want him to wait joyfully and not wait in anger? <laughs> right? Well, he's patient, which what, what that means is he deals with us joyfully while he's waiting on us to develop and grow and mature into some things. Amen. So patience is about how you wait, not just waiting. Um, Patience must be most prevalent in the home because the home is full of imperfect people who are still growing. Amen. And we have to exercise our patience there. Um, Not only that, we have to be patient toward the plan of God coming to pass in the sense of there are, there's timing Mm -hmm. for certain things to happen. And it's not that God takes a long time to bring us into his plan, but God will bring us into certain aspects of his plan when we're prepared to step into them. So God is waiting for us to be prepared. So we don't want to be impatient toward the plan because, you know, there are things that almost 40 years I've had in my heart of things that God showed me decades ago that I'm just now seeing come to pass. To be patient toward the time. It's not that it's taken God a long time. He's waiting for me to be prepared to be brought into these seasons. 
He does that for everyone. Yes. If we're not patient about the timing of things, we'll try to force something right. and try to step into something unprepared. Right. And then it, that place that he intended for us becomes a place of downfall rather than a place of acceleration and increase yeah. when we get there not prepared. Yes. Let me ask you this. I'm not one to ride roller coasters. Anybody in here like roller coasters? Yeah. Oh, so on purpose? Okay. <laughs> Y'all like roller coasters. My husband loved roller coasters. I'm just fine on the ground. I'm, I don't need something to jerk me around. Different strokes for different folks, right? And, and so um, the thing that they do, if you go to get on a roller coaster ride, there's some prep they do. They, they don't just have you sit down and then take off. What do they do? They buckle you in. Yeah. Why? They want you to enjoy the ride. Yeah. They don't want you yeah. dumped out yeah. on the ride. Right. So there's prep work. The plan of God calls for prep work so that you enjoy right. the ride. Yeah. And if we try to, if we become impatient and try to force ourselves into a place we're not prepared for, even what God planned won't be enjoyed. And it can also be basically missed if we're not prepared. So God is patient while he's preparing us. And we must be patient while that preparation uh, uh, process takes place. Just knowing this, skipping preparation doesn't make you more prepared. You don't want to rush through preparation. You want to be fully prepared because once you're fully prepared, it won't take long for the plan of God to be fulfilled. Listen, Jesus prepared for 30 years before he was launched into a, uh, that, that public ministry. Well, we know this, that in, under Jewish custom and Jewish law, a man could not preach in the synagogue till he's 30. So God did not set aside the, the, the guidelines of the system just to accommodate his son. He prepared his son. And when Jesus was baptized uh, by John the Baptist in the river Jordan, there came a voice from heaven and said, this is my beloved son. Look at this. And whom I'm well pleased. Not one sermon preached, not one miracle worked, no one healed, but yet God said he's pleased. What's he pleased with? That Jesus allowed himself to be prepared. It was all preparation time. But once Jesus was prepared, it only took three years to fulfill salvation for the world. Think of it. Doesn't take long when you're prepared. Preparation time is the most time and it's your most valuable time. Don't rush through it. Right. Don't shortchange it. Amen. There was a, a, uh, a minister, Charles Spurgeon, uh, in the 1800s, a leading Baptist pastor in his day, a, some, a phenomenal minister, uh, had a great impact and people still, of course, refer to him today. And a student in his Bible school asked him a question one time and said, if you only had 20 years to your life and you only knew you had, tw- you knew you only had 20 years, he said, how would you spend those 20 years? And uh, Charles Spurgeon made this statement. I would take the first 15 to prepare for the last five. Wow. What's he saying? I would use the majority of my time to prepare for the time of true ministry to where I could have the most impact. So never shortchange preparation. And people who are not interested in preparation, it's because of impatience. Develop patience. Don't step out. Some may know that God has them to, he wants them to be a pastor. Don't do it till you're prepared. Some may know he has uh, a traveling ministry for him. Don't do it till you're prepared. The ho- follow the Holy Ghost. What, that's what that means. The preparation time will look different for some people. And it, can, it will last different lengths of time. Um, I know this, that as you go, he'll prepare you. I understand that. But you're not going to hit, if I could say this, the, the, the climax and the fullest potential of your ministry without preparation. Um, God, I started pastoring when I was 30 and, um, during that time I was learning the whole time I was learning, 
But I, God was not just preparing me as for pastoring, but he was preparing me for things after pastoring too. Amen. So your whole life you're preparing. Yes. Your whole life you're training and being prepared. Be patient with the process. Don't shortchange that time. Yes. It's to your benefit. Yes. When somebody says, uh, if God tells them, um, it's time for you to step out. Your first response needs to be, I'd rather stay here and prepare some more. Yeah. That needs to be your first right. yeah. instead of, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm ready. Yeah. When someone who is sober, they don't try sober about what they're called to. Right. They're not trying to cheat preparation. Right. Right. They want to get everything they can. They're not eager to get out from under training. Right. They're not eager to get out from under someone who's pouring into them. Yes. They want everything they can get. And they, they would, it's better to stay too long than stay too short. Yeah. It's better. To, it's best to move with God, but I'm yeah. saying yeah. you, it, you don't want to do it too short right. that preparation time. So, uh, when does, when, when does, um, walking in love come into that being patient, mm -hmm. yes. being patient right. toward it. Right. Amen. Amen. Um, then the next, the next phrase we looked at on the previous episode was this next thing that is described in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Love is patient, but love is kind. Yes. Other translations of that phrase says love is courteous. Mm -hmm. Ah, so if we've lost our manners, mm -hmm. <laughs> if we're no longer mannerly, we, we've put away kindness. Mm -hmm. Um, it says love is kind. Another translation says love is kind, gentle, benign. What's benign mean? Mm -hmm. It means uh, no harm, mm -hmm. yeah. not dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, pervading and penetrating the whole nature. Kindness, right? Mm -hmm. Mellowing all which would have been harsh and austere. What's this mean? Walking in love means walking in kindness, means you remove the edge. You don't bump into people and cut them. With the way you speak, uh -huh. the way you handle them. Yes. You can't just say, well, that's just the way I was raised. Well, kindness will round off right. the edges yes. Yes. of your personality, yes. of your upbringing, of your temperament, of your way of interacting with people. Yes. Kindness matters. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's true. Amen. Amen. To be unkind is to step outside of love. And to step outside of love, your faith will stop working. Yeah. People don't realize that sometimes, like I said, they think they have faith problems when they really need to learn to be kind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, since our families live with us the most, they should get the best version of us. Right. 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 Meaning this, our kindness is not just for strangers we'll never see again in public. Mm -hmm. right. We should be most kind at home. Yeah. Yeah. We're not the real the real us isn't portrayed when we're out among the public. The real us is portrayed at home. That's how far, we know our spiritual development by how we are at home. Because anyone can put on good behavior for the 30 minutes they're out in the store, right? But in the home, everything, the, the, Mm, let, let's say the core of your behavior yes. is going to become visible. Right. So don't look at how you treat people outside the home to know your spiritual development. Yes. Look at how you treat people in the home. Yes. Because in the home is the way you are all yes. the time. Yes. And that's what God's dealing with us, maturing how we are all the time, not just how we are in spurts of time. Right. Right. When we're in church or out in the store shopping, right? Yes. How, do we, how do we talk to our spouse? That's the real us. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's where, we, the, how we're talking to our spouse is revealing our spiritual development. Yes. How we're handling our children and talking yes. with them is revealing our spiritual yes. development, not how we talk with a guy we'll never see again, right. but how we talk to those at home. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Love hits the home life first. Yes. Amen. Amen. Love doesn't change based on who it's dealing with, uh, for love is based on the one in you. It's not based on others. So no matter how someone else treats you, we're not dismissed from the love flow. We're not dismissed from being kind. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Um, 
another thing that it says under this description of love is kind, love is courteous. Yes. Uh, courtesy is not just good manners. It's a flow of love. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good. God is a perfect gentleman. Yes. That's right. He is a perfect gentleman. Yes. He does not embarrass people. Amen. He does not shame people. That's right. Yeah. Now, don't misunderstand me. Sometimes he'll correct, right. Right. but he's not embarrassing. That's a flow of love. Lo- correction is a flow of the love of God. Yes. Yes. Right. So sometimes God will correct. He'll correct yes. through a pastor. He'll correct through a sermon. He'll correct through a spouse. He'll correct by the Holy Ghost. He'll correct through his word. Yes. He doesn't correct through tragedy. Uh-huh. He doesn't correct through sickness and disease yeah. and yeah. Yeah. taking something yeah. from you. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's with words he corrects. Right. Yes. With words, he, yeah. he talks to you. Yeah. Um, but courtesy is a flow of love and God is the ultimate example. Jesus was courteous. Yes. Yes. He was courteous, yeah. Um, since love is courteous, that courtesy should be seen in your home. Your manners should abound in your home. Now listen to that. You should not set aside your manners because you're dealing with your family. That's when they should see the greatest demonstration of manners because they live with you all the time. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And this is all spiritual growth. It's all spiritual development. It's the development of the love walk. It's the... To, to be courteous to your family members is the skill of love. Yes. You're being skillful in love. To think, well, I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm around my family. I don't have to display manners. So basically you're saying I, I can set aside my love. No, you, we're not ever authorized to set aside our love walk. Amen. Amen. Another thing that says love cares for others more than self. Since this is true, that means I'm as committed to your success as I am to my own. Meaning I'm not going to step on you for me to achieve something. That I'm going to lift you as as God lifts me. I'm lifting those around me. Um, With Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, with Daniel... They were, um, they were men serving in the same kingdom at the same time. They were in fellowship with one another. They were government men. Um, there were strategies that were brought against them to try to get them removed. But the strategy always turned out working for their advancement and promotion. Um, when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, think of this. When Daniel was stoned in the lion's den, um, God didn't deliver him before he was thrown in. It's like, if I were Daniel, it's like, God, anytime you want to work and move before that event, right? But God allowed, God didn't have a part of it, but God allowed him to be thrown in because why? Because then as through, as far as his enemies threw them in, that's how far they would, they would reap. Mm-hmm. And God, they're in, then Daniel's enemies were thrown in. Wow. They sowed it, they reaped it. Wow. And so God delivered Daniel when the king brought him out. Uh, he, prom- of course, made the command, Daniel's God is God. We're worshiping him. We're not, that's who we're worshiping. And he was promoted, but Daniel also got hold of his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were all promoted together. Mm -hmm. Why? He brought those that were of his divine connection Mm -hmm. up with him. We are divinely connected to the body of Christ. We bring others up, meaning we feed into their success. We're not just saying, how can I succeed? How can I succeed? But in succeeding, how can I bring up others into that success? I remember something... um, Listen, Jesus has done that for every one of us. I mean, several, several years ago, you know, you're so acquainted with yourself. I'm acquainted with myself, right? We're acquainted with where we miss it. And there was just something where I just kept missing it in a certain place, just kept missing it. And I, I went one day to God and I said, God, here I am repenting again for that same miss. I I keep tripping over the same point. Mm And uh, I said, I, I, I again repent for that. And um, 
when I did that, uh, several moments later, Jesus came walking in. Mm -hmm. You say, did you see him? No, but I knew by word of knowledge exactly where he was standing. Mm -hmm. He stood right in front of me and he said, you have failed many, many times. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was so glad when he said that to me that I was the first one that brought that up. And it wasn't him bringing it up the first time. I brought that up. He said, you have failed many, many times. Listen to what he said. He didn't leave me there. He said, but I never have. Mm -hmm. So I share my success with you. That's love. We, what God brings us into, we share that success. Now, how did, how does Jesus share his success with us? Well, we know one, one attribute of it. He took his own righteousness and made it ours. He made us right with God, not because we've done everything right, but because he did everything right and then credited it to us as though we were the ones who did it right. Therefore, everything we've done wrong is washed away by the blood and we stand before God as though we've never missed it, as though we've done everything right. Jesus brought us into his success of doing everything right by making us righteous. So we live that way. We are success minded by being righteous minded. We're not failure minded by being sin conscious, conscious of where we missed it, conscious of what we're not, conscious of what somebody's done to us, conscious Conscious of what we've done to somebody else. No, it's all cleansed by the blood and we're living righteous conscious. That's walking in love is, is that when we walk with that mindset, I am right in him because that's who I am spiritually. That's who he made all of his children to be. And so we walk in line with that and that's walking in love toward the success he made ours. Amen. 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 Well, we're talking, we're teaching out of my book called Love the Great Quest. We want you to get your copy of it because you got to read these things and feed on them over and over and over. You can go to deframeministries.org or jesusthehealer.org and you can order your copy there. Let us know that you want your copy and we'll get it right out to you. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Love is to lead and govern us, and we are to make it our quest to pursue the way love leads. Victories await us as we learn to walk in the truths of divine love found in this book by Nancy Dufresne. Order Love, The Great Quest now at DufresneMinistries.org. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne inviting you to join us in Murrieta, California at World Harvest Church for our annual Holy Ghost meetings. The dates are January the 5th through the 10th. We're inviting everyone to go to our website at DufresneMinistries.org and register. We look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. In this series, How to Keep Your Healing by Nancy Dufresne, learn how to skillfully stand your ground against the enemy's strategies and enjoy your total victory. Order now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.